Nice. I give you $200 to call your dad and tell him that you're pregnant? Yeah. Oh, it's awesome. Okay. Hi, Dad. What you doing? Uh, so I have some news. Okay. Um, I'm pregnant. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, I am. I made a mistake. What? I'm sorry. Are you serious? Yes. Who are you? I'm in, well, I'm, I'm in Provo, so. I'm just walking to my car. And... Okay. Good. Okay, that was a prank. I just won $200. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good day. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Aduh bang, terkejut saya bang. Saya ingatkan air biasa je bang. Masuk-masuk menggelegak bang. Aduh, tak sempat nak ucap dua kalimat syadah. Show me the reason you have no money. It is a moment of unbearable anguish. The mother of one of the young victims of yesterday's massacre steals herself. She is preparing to confirm what she must already know in her heart. Inside the coffin, her little one stabbed to death. The grief is oppressive here families buckling under the strain as they try to comprehend the murder of 24 children and another dozen adults. <laughs> 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 
The toll on this tiny community is beyond measure, but etched in the faces of those who remain. Sexan Sriraj lost his heavily pregnant wife, who was a teacher at the school. He says, I cried until I had no more tears coming out of my eyes. They are running through my heart. My wife and my child have gone to a peaceful place. I am alive and I will have to live. The shock is all the greater as people are trying to digest the news. The killer was a former policeman, Panya Kamrap, who'd been about to face court on drugs charges. After killing or injuring almost everyone he encountered, he hunted down his own family, ending his last journey here at his partner's house, murdering her and his own son before turning the gun on himself.